Well, I want to say, first of all, thank you so much. <sighs> Let's put it this way, very humbling. I didn't expect anything. I didn't, because I, I'm committed to the cause of Christ. That's my heart. That's my heart. Someone said to me, um, whoa, there's an echo here. Anyway, someone said to me, oh, you've got a lot of passion. I'll tell you, the, the things that I've gone through in my life, the, uh, the depressions that I've gone through, I've had four bouts with depression in my life. And when you go through all that and you see how faithful God is, how can you not be passionate about what you believe? There's no, there's no other way. There's no other, no other way to be able to respond. He deserves everything. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Anyway, um, I love Christmas. I love Christmas. I love the lights. Lights shining everywhere. Wow, isn't that just amazing? And uh, I was uh, traveling through downtown Riddier the other day, and I looked at City Hall. And I saw this one big tree right in the northeast corner. And it just, all these lights on it. It was just like, wow, it was awesome. And then you travel a little further, and you see these other lights, all these various shrubs and trees decorated with all these wonderful colors and so forth. And it's just like, I tell, you, I tell myself, wow, this is just amazing. And then, of course, downtown area, you see all the lights on the streets. And the streets are decorated and all. Oh, it, it is just absolutely gorgeous. And I know there are people who say, well, that's a, we're celebrating the festival of lights. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. I look at the various houses. You go down the streets here in Red Deer and any other city in Canada and the United States, you see all these houses lit up with all these wonderful lights. And, and they, you, you go into a lot of these homes and you see all these uh, Christmas trees. And, and uh, I know we've got one in our house and it's just all lit up, decorated. You've got a star on it and you've got, and whatever. I mean, just, just gorgeous. Just fabulous. And shortly we will be, we will exhibit a symbol of the real thing by using candles. But I, when I look at all this, I see celebration everywhere. People are celebrating whether they understand it or not. And there are people who don't even understand. They don't want to even think of Christmas. They don't want to even think of Jesus Christ. But they're celebrating anyway. Because who is it that created lights? God is the one who created all this. Whether people understand it or not, they're celebrating. They're celebrating Jesus, the Messiah coming 2,000 years ago. And so when we celebrate, we remember that these lights are symbolic. And remind us of the real things which are, have great significance. And so that's what I want to talk to you about in the next few moments. We're not going to keep it long. But there are some significant truths that I want, to, I want to share with you this morning. Because these lights all represent that. They're symbolic. Number one. The first thing that I think of is the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord. When you think of that night in which the shepherds were out in the field... Men who were very insignificant in that society back then. But they would have an encounter. An enormous encounter. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verse 8 to 14, it says this. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Could you just imagine? They had an encounter and had an experience they've never had before. The light of the glory of God would shine around. They've seen lights before, but they've never seen something like this ever. Hallelujah. You could just imagine what, what they felt that very night. 
They were so right. They were afraid because they've never experienced something like this before. And an angel would say things like this. Do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. Wow. Good news in the midst of all the turmoil back in those days. Good news, the angel said, I bring to you. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with an angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward man. What an experience. Yes, they had an announcement made, good news. But they also experienced a multitude of angels singing, praise. Wow, there was celebration in heaven because a Savior was born that would affect all mankind. And they would say things like, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward man. So the first significant truth is, is the glory of God, the glory of the Lord. The second one is the star. Now this star was not like any other ordinary star. It was the Messiah's star. In Matthew chapter 2 verse 1 and 2 it says this. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. And then verse number 9 says, When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding, exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. These men would not, I mean, there were men who were students. They were students, they were astronomers, but, but they also studied things. They studied the stars and they studied, I'm sure, the, the book of Daniel, for instance, the writings of uh, or Jewish writings. They studied this. They studied prophecy. And they were looking for this star. And one day this star would appear. And within their hearts, I am sure, they had a revelation from God that said, this is the key star. This is the star that will guide you to the place where Jesus is. And this star did guide them. Because they had this revelation from God. And it came to that place. To the very place. This, this star would guide them. To the very location where Jesus was. And the light from that star would shine upon this house. And confirm to them. This is where the king of the Jews is. He was about one year old back then. So we have two things. Significant truths. The glory of the Lord and the star. The third one is this. Jesus is the light. Jesus is the light. In Luke's gospel chapter 2 verse 25 to 32. It talks about a man by the name of Simeon. See, Jesus was about eight days old. They would follow a custom back then where Jesus would be circumcised and then he would be dedicated to the Lord. But God had prepared a man by the name of Simeon. And it says this, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. He was an old man. But God had said to him, you're not going to die until you see Jesus Christ, the Christ child. And it goes on to say, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him according to the custom of the, of the law, I could just imagine what it was like. <laughs> I could just imagine. God had promised to Simeon he would not die until he saw the Christ child. And when he came to the temple, the people were there. And he saw the Christ child. Could you just imagine taking this child into his arms, holding the Savior of the world? Simeon, finally, he would have an encounter with the Christ child who would be the Savior of the whole world. That would have been incredible. I would have loved to have been there. That would have been an incredible experience. But then God gave him 
a prophetic word because it says when he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you're letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation. He says, I have seen now this child, the Savior of the world. Salvation for all mankind, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples. This was not an accident. God had a plan, and this plan was unfolding. And then it says this in verse 32. A light to bring the revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. This same Jesus is a light who has come to reveal what the will of God is to all mankind. What is the will of God? The will of God is this, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That mankind needs God. Without God, we have absolutely nothing. There is no hope without him. He's the only hope there is. All the religions of the world and all the philosophies of the world cannot meet the heart condition of mankind, cannot change mankind. Only Jesus Christ, our salvation, has come. And he's the only one who can do it. Hallelujah. And if you're not saved here tonight or this morning tonight, Christmas Eve. <laughs> Hallelujah. But this Christmas morning, Christmas Eve morning, let's put it that way. Christmas Eve morning. Wow, that's whatever. Anyway, but if you're not saved, you've never asked Jesus into your life, this is the moment for you. You can come to know Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. He is there for you. Hallelujah. The Bible says, uh, John 14, 6, Jesus said to, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Then later on, he would say in John chapter 5, verse 40, but you are not willing to come to me that you may have life because life only comes through a connection with Jesus Christ. There is no other life. And the life that he gives is the life that you can have with him coming into your life. You can have an abundant life on this earth, but also this life is eternal. Hallelujah. Praise God. But then number four. The very significant truth that this, these lights represent is that you and I are lights. You and I are lights. You and I are lights. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Is there really a problem here? Because Scripture says that He is the light of the world. And then Jesus says, but you are the light of the world. Is that confusing? Maybe it is. But I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. Oh, man. Just think of this. Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. And when you and I get connected to Him, the power source... He is the power source, glory to God. And when you get connected to him, you become a light. Hallelujah. You become a light in this world. And as you spend time with Jesus Christ, as you grow in him, your light becomes brighter and brighter in this dark world, in this chaotic world. And we're living in a chaotic situation. There's no doubt about that. And God has called you to be a light in this world. Hallelujah. A light in this world. And the Bible says, it says, so, in verse 16, let your light so shine before men. We need to demonstrate to the world that we're not like the world. We are different. We reflect Him, His will, His ways. We reflect Him in the way we live at our workplaces, in our neighborhoods, wherever we are. We're to reflect Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That we're not like the world. We have hope. And we live with a future in mind that one day we're going to be with him forever and ever because he's coming back someday. Christmas reminds us that Jesus is also coming back. He's coming back. Hallelujah. He's our Savior. And he wants us to be with him forever and ever. Hallelujah. And there's that day coming. And believe you me, it's coming soon. Sooner than you think. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. He is coming. So let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. There are people who are looking for hope. There are people right now, this very moment as I stand here today, they're searching. 
diligently searching, trying to find hope somewhere. And they're getting connected to the occult and, some, and the cults in this world. But Jesus is the only hope. He is the only hope. Hallelujah. And we as believers, I challenge you this morning, let your light so shine before man that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. I want this morning, it's interesting, that you have one light, but then when you get another person saved, you, have, you got double the light. And then you have other people. Then you have triple the light. Wow. You have more and more people. Just imagine all of us in this room. You are all lights. And if you really let your light so shine, wow, you can affect your community for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let your light so shine. Don't let the world steal it from you. But let it shine. Let it shine. We want to demonstrate to you this morning. We want to demonstrate by using candles this morning. How one light, then you go to the second light, and then the third light. How this whole place can be lit up. Hallelujah. Just a, a demonstration how you can affect your world where you live as well. Praise God. So what I'm going to do, um, let's just pray first of all. Father, I just so thank you for this message today. The challenge, Lord God. That as we look at all these lights and we see them here on the, on the stage and, and Lord, throughout this city, Lord, lights that have been put up during this, this time of the season. Lord God, I thank you for these lights because Lord God, it reminds us of the real light. Jesus, you are the light of the world. And when we get connected with you, we become lights in this world. And I pray, Lord God, that you would help us, Lord God, during this Christmas season, Lord God, for every child of God in this place, Lord God, to really let the light shine. God, I pray that, Father, we do not forget the fact as to who we represent in this world. We represent you, the light of the world, and we are lights. And I just pray, Lord God, Spirit of God, move upon our hearts. Touch our lives. Help us to be different. Help us really to become those shining lights like a city on the hill. Lord, I thank you. And I give you praise. And I give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Praise the Lord.